we have to start establishing that this is our place. From here on out, hey, this is what we play for. We're better safe than them. Let's go. Come on, look in now. Let's go. Hello and welcome to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Butel alongside the head coach of the GCU men's basketball team, Dan Marley. And Dan, this is season number six. Wow. Yeah. It's flown by, hasn't it? Exciting, man. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been really fast. It has. It, uh, it's been a fun ride. And how about that ride on uh, Midnight Man? Oh. Uh, how about that transition? I tell you, it never, uh, it never ceases to amaze me. You know, the first one uh, six years ago was, was unbelievable. Um, but this last one I thought was our best, and that's saying a lot because they're all so great. But uh, our student body and uh, everybody that puts it together, um, Taylor and Helen and all those people, they do an unbelievable job. But the energy that uh, the students have brought, um, it just really shows what GC is all about. Dressed up as Batman. It didn't, there was no padding in that. Zero in padding, year, right? Yeah. yeah. No six pack, nothing. nothing. It was just all natural. All you, all yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. How about this year? How excited are you as you approach this sixth season with this, this squad? Extremely guys? excited. You know, last year was our first taste of being able to try to get to the tournament. We got all the way to the finals. That was a good step for our group. Um, and I'm really excited about the guys that we have this year. We have some. Uh, really good returning players, but the guys that we have brought on are, are hard, hard, high class guys. They work, work really hard. Um, I'm excited about this team. Um, they're really a, a group of workers. So um, this could be a really good season for us. What was your takeaway from going to the finals, the first year of tournament eligibility last year? Uh, it was a good uh, opportunity for our guys to see what it takes. Mm -hmm. um, I think if we would have went in there and lost to the first game or something, it would have been a real uh, a downer for us. But for us to be able to get by that first game and then get by the second and uh, have the feeling of what it takes to win three games in a tournament setting, it was a good uh, stepping stone for our, our guys, and I think it really made them uh, a little bit more hungry. The offseason, there were some uh, staff changes. Todd Lee goes up to his alma mater at South Dakota to take over as head coach. You bring, bring in Lewis Wilson. Yeah, really happy for Todd, for him to be able to go back to his alma mater where he went to school and to get a head coaching gig at South Dakota, uh, well deserved for him. He was a fantastic uh, part of uh, what we've been able to do here the last five years. So very happy for him. Luke Delariva, who was our basketball ops, joined Todd and has uh, got a coaching role there, which he wanted to do. And then we brought on Lewis Wilson, who's uh, as I said, like Todd is a lifetime coach. That's what he likes to do. He's, he's coached at all different levels. He's been a head coach and uh, brings a lot of energy uh, to our practices. And I've been very uh, pleased with what he's brought to our team. So uh, again, as I did with Todd, I thought I had, to, I, thought I had another gr grand slam hire here with Lewis. Let's talk about some of the uh, new faces for fans this season. And we begin with maybe a couple of kids from uh, Illinois. You get a grad transfer, Michael Finke from Illinois, and then you bring in his freshman, who's what a four-star recruit in high school in Illinois, and, and uh, Tim Finke. Yeah, both those guys are really uh, high-class uh, individuals, people we want to represent GCU, and they're very talented. Michael has played at a Power Five conference at Illinois, was a starter there. Um, really brings a guy who's got a lot of talent and just know-how. Can really shoot the ball, 6'10", great size, and smart. Uh, so that's a great addition for us, and he's going to be playing alongside with Ollie, which will really help Ollie out. And then Tim. Uh, is just a miniature part of, of what Michael is. He's six foot seven, crashes the boards, uh, shoots it pretty well, but just I like his intensity and how hard he plays, and we're lucky to have him for four years. This month, uh, you've got some great news, didn't you, from uh, Carlos Johnson and his eligibility? Yeah, we got, uh, you know, Carlos was, was uh, granted a waiver from the NCAA, so he's going to be eligible this year, and I'm really ha happy for him and his family, and uh, that'll just give us another piece on the floor. Trey Drexel is a kid that stepped in and has turned some heads, right? Trey's been really good. He's another guy who brings tremendous size, uh, came from Division II uh, program, but um, I've been really impressed not only with his work ethic, but his skill. Mm -hmm. uh, can play a couple different positions. We, came, we, we brought him in here to play a little bit of the point guard. He'll probably back up Damari, but you'll see him on the floor a lot as a two guard too, but Guy has got tremendous size and can really shoot it. Let's talk about some guys that are coming back now. Ollie Laver, he certainly uh, shined in his freshman season, didn't he? Yeah, you know, Ollie kind of came out of, I wouldn't say nowhere because he was a high, highly touted recruit, but he really turned it on there in the second half, especially in the season. And he was kind of our go to guy. We throw him the ball in the post and he really scored and, and you know, reflects in his awards. You know, he was freshman of the year and first team all whack. So I'm excited for Ollie. He's just got to go out there. He's got a lot of help around him and just play the way he did last year and continue to get better. In his second season is Roberts Blumberg's. What do you see from him? 
Uh, Roberts has gotten a lot better. You know, he's got this nickname as, as, as Big Smooth. Oh, and yeah. unfortunately, he he's taken that to heart. Right? Yeah. yeah. And I kind of got on him about two weeks ago about not being Big Smooth anymore. He's got to start playing a lot harder. And, and since he's done that, he's been uh, really good. Um, so I'm excited what he's been able to do the last couple of weeks. And if he continues to play with that kind of ferocity and uh, plays like that, when that, you know, that hard, he should be a pretty good player for us. I can't believe the uh, human highlight reel, Oscar Freyer, is a junior this season. Yeah. Has he, you said he needs to figure out what type of player is. Do you think he's found? I think he's figuring it out. It? Yeah, you know, Oscar sometimes uh, gets caught up in whether he's getting shots or if he's got a score. And, and a guy like that who can really play and uh, the energy he plays with, he just got to go out and play. You know, his energy will find the ball. He'll get his shots. He's got to rebound. He's got to play defense. Uh, but he's going to be a big piece. For us to be successful this year, he's going to have to play well. And uh, he's improved every year, and I expect him to do it again this year. So much depth, you know, when we talked in year one or two and, and this this sixth season and you yep. know, we haven't even talked about Jared Martin or Matt Jackson. I mean, you've got some depth on this team. We really do. You know, we got 11, probably 11 guys right now that are going to really be battling for playing time. Um, and they all got really good size. And I say that, you know, we'll be big, extremely big for our league, but I think we're going to be really big uh, nationwide. I mean, our size is tremendous all the way down. You know, Damari is our smallest player at 6'2", 6'3". Uh, we can have a lineup there that our shortest guy may be 6'7". So we do have a lot of depth, a lot of guys who can play in different positions, but our height uh, is going to be something that we're going to have uh, be one of our strengths, but it's also probably going to be one of our weaknesses because we're going to have to be able to find a way to guard smaller people. All right, stay with us. We'll have more of the Dan Marley Show after we take this time out on Fox Sports Arizona. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show here on Fox Sports Arizona. Barry Butel alongside the head coach of the women's basketball team here at GCU, Nicole Powell. Nicole, welcome to the show. Welcome to season number two here at Grand Canyon University. You're number one, though. Very impressive. I mean, you came in a short time frame. You reeled off nine conference victories. You went to the semifinals, first year eligibility in the WAC conference. But I know as a head coach, you're never happy right. until you win that tournament, right? Absolutely. Appreciate the compliments. Um, we had a terrific season. We wish we had done better, right? That, yeah. That's the goal is to go out and win the whole thing. Um, but really pleased with the effort that uh, our team had and, and gave, especially at the end of the season. It was a close one in the WAC tournament. Well, it all gets started. We're just uh, days away now from season number two for Nicole, and it all gets starts, started uh, at Midnight Madness for the students here at Grand Canyon University. You really wonder how Midnight Madness is going to top it from year after year, but they seem to do it year after year, and it was crazy. It was. I, I don't know how they figure this stuff out, yeah. um, but it's just a terrific event, and uh, just we're so lucky uh, that they put so much effort and time into uh, you know presenting the basketball teams with dance and cheer and the havocs and, and everybody else. It's uh, it's great to see the student support uh, both programs and and the support here on campus in a in a growing campus. It's overwhelming, isn't it? It's unbelievable, honestly. And uh, again, just it was so loud in there. I could hardly hear myself. I was on the mic yeah. and and I couldn't even hear anything. Uh, but it was it was an awesome experience. How much more comfortable are you here in this environment in season number two as head coach? You know, things have slowed down a tad. Uh, you know, we now have uh, uh, office supplies, so that's always nice. I, I know where the pens are and the notepads exactly. are, um, but I'm just really pleased with how hard um, the entire staff has worked all off season. You know, recruiting never ends, and that, that's the lifeline of our program is bringing in really great players, really great young people who are hungry to be a part of this program and put us on the map. And I think we've got some great newcomers this year. Yeah, I saw you traveling all around the world, uh, recruiting, of course, getting the best here at GCU, but also some accolades for you and assistants to coach Nikki Blue. You went into the National High School Hall of Fame and then Nikki honored at the UCLA Athletics Hall of Fame. Great honors for both of you. It is. Or it means we're just getting really old, Barry. It's, it's one thing Not or the quite. other. Not quite. You got a little <laughs> ways to go. But, it, but that had to be phenomenal to be recognized because you were a standout here locally. It was. I, you know, it was just um, a great time for me to, to kind of look back at my career and just thank all of the different coaches, teachers, people along the way who have um, you know, just poured into my life as a, as a student athlete. And uh, it was just a really nice way to kind of showcase Arizona and all the, all the fine people at the AIA who uh, work so hard to give all of our student athletes in, in high school sports a great opportunity and a great experience. Nobody does it alone, right? It takes a team. You're putting a team together in season number two. You lose Bree Mo Mobley, you know, great, great leader, great uh, offensive threat defensively, playing real well. 
from the three, Jess Gajewski, you could, you could see her drain a few threes in the games as well. Newcomers, talk a little bit about this team uh, as it tries to come together here for season number two. Well, no doubt we're gonna miss, miss those uh, seniors who led the way, um, but we're really excited about who's here now. And I think we've just got a lot more depth, we're more athletic, uh, more mobile, which was our goal to increase in all those areas. I think we accomplished that. Uh, as far as replacing those, those two stars, you don't just do that. Uh, you know, we've got to do it by committee and I think we've got a really good chemistry, you know, starting to build within the team. I know everyone's excited, we're excited. I'm sure you are as well. Get it going. Thank you. Good luck in season number two. We appreciate it, thank you. All right, head coach Nicole Powell, the GCU women's basketball team. Stay with us, more of the Dan Marley Show coming up right after this. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show here on Fox Sports Arizona. Barry Butel alongside Lopes Insider Paul Coro, Kate Longworth and Scott Williams, my partners on the television broadcast. Back for season number six of Dan Marley here at GCU. Paul, can you believe it? Six seasons for Marley here at Grand Canyon? Crazy. He's actually been coach here longer than he was coaching for the Suns. And you've seen the dedication he has and the way things are rising year after year with what they've done with facilities and inside the program. Okay, you've seen it here for the last few years as well. The atmosphere at the arena, it's amazing. It's absolutely incredible. I mean, I think every year or when you're trying to describe it to someone, you can't put the words into it. And then they walk into the arena and they get what you were trying to say, that feeling and um, just how much that uh, six man can mean to a team and what the Havocs can do. And I think that energy, how it transforms and transcends onto the court and you see these players. And I'm excited with the mix of the veterans and the new guys and them playing off that energy. You've seen it. You were overwhelmed that, that first season. And I don't even have to ask you to come back. No, no, you don't. I, I absolutely love coming here. And you can tell the passion which Marley has. It translates to his guys, the way that they play. He has built a brand here that has been successful over 20 years, uh, 20 victories every year. Last season, of course, the team went to the conference tournament for the very first time, tournament eligibility, went to that championship game. Unfortunately, came up short in that game, but what was the biggest takeaway, you think, from going to that tournament championship game? That they're ready for this level. When you're one step away from the, the dream of a tournament in your first year of full eligibility, that's a great achievement. They went 22 plus for the third straight year. And now you have a freshman who's gonna be part of the program moving forward that's already considered the best player in the conference, preseason player of the year, Alexander Laver got other guys like Oscar Freire coming back and then you are able to build on that by recruiting other talent because of what you've done so far. You kind of have to know the, the road, right? You have to know the path to get there. They certainly know where what they need to do to, to uh, reach the tournament. Uh, absolutely. I know in the NBA there's some growing pains that come with building a program. I don't think that's any different in college level. You have to take some baby steps along the path, way to get there. I think they've done that. They've proven that they can win on the road against tough opponents. They can win at home and defend their home court. They can go into the tournament and be tournament tough. So all those experiences lead to them trying to capture that WAC title this year. Let's go back. You talked about Alessandro Laver. What a great freshman campaign. Plays feisty. He's a big man. We'll have to get Scott's comments on the big man. But your thoughts about Ali? Yeah, you'd think back and you, at the beginning of the year, he couldn't get through conditioning, you know, and he wasn't <laughs> starting. And then that transformation where he earns a starting job in the first month of the season and by the end of the year, those last 16 games, he almost averaged 19 points a game and he's showing this inside outside game. And you can only imagine where it goes from here. You have a better idea for where a big man takes his game next. Well, I like that progress. Generally for big players, it takes a little bit longer and he came on extremely fast. I would have thought it wouldn't have happened for after, you know, midway through his sophomore year for it to happen so quickly his freshman year where he's going out and getting 25 and 12, 30 and 15 uh, on a nightly basis. But the second half of that season was very impressive. And another guy that was impressive, Kate, was Oscar Freire. Yeah. The human highlight reel, Oscar Freire, clearing runway four. I mean, this guy is uh, phenomenal, and I can't believe he's a junior. I know, all of a sudden, um, you know, you're calling him a veteran, but what hasn't changed is that leadership presence. I think we were talking about him being a freshman and what is he going to do out there, and I think what really stood out to all of us was his composure out there and how quickly he adapted to Dan Marley's system. And it's fun for me because I was uh, in the Bay Area several years ago and he was coming up in high school, mm -hmm. and he was someone we were excited to talk about at the high school level. To, so to see what he's developed into college, he's really just followed that path, and I just think he um, he's coachable, and I think like Dan Marley, likes that and then I, I've been impressed with his leadership and his presence out there from day one and I think it's only going to be more exciting for him now that he has that experience under his belt. Do you think he's found the type of player he wants to be? Marley always said he just needs to figure out what type of player he is. Well he could be that classic 3 and D guy but brings so much athleticism too because his shooting percentage increased so much last season that's what you get encouraged by to see that 
big year-to-year -year jump, and he could take another leap forward now. What did you think of Big O? Oh, I really like him. I think his confidence is coming, as a willingness to be able to shoot the outside shot, space the floor for some of those big guys inside that we talked about. It's going to be huge. I mean, you don't have Josh Braun walking through that door. Casey Benson, we need somebody to step up and show some leadership. Well, one guy that was a big, big surprise with the waiver is Carlos Johnson. A transfer from Washington, gets cleared to play back in the backcourt. You talk about that. Damari's back there, another transfer, D2 transfer trade. Drexel's been lighting it up as well in the workouts. What do you see from the backcourt? Yeah, I see Carlos Johnson making a big impact. They took a preseason trip to the Bahamas, and he was their best scorer on that trip. He yeah. has so much aggression. Uh, he's a guy who can bail you out at the end of the shot clock, but brings that toughness with the chip on his shoulder, the way he plays. He's kind of like... If Keontae Vernon was a guard, he's got that kind of nice. mentality where he just goes, goes, goes. And, he, you know, he's a Pac-12 starter two years ago for Washington. And to have that kind of talent come in is instant impact. You talk about uh, Casey, of course, in that backcourt as well. But, of course, Dwayne Russell. They've been looking for, for that leader in that backcourt for, for a couple of years now. Yeah, and I think it just speaks volumes about this program now that players want to come here. They want to play. It is on the map. GCU, Lopes, you know, people know what they are about and what they're, t they're talking about them. And you see when you want to come here and either play under your brother if he's coaching or play with your brother out on the court or play with a friend or you knew about this school in high school, you weren't sure what the what was shaping up at the university and now you see this top tier program. And I think that is really uh, stands out to me with GCU basketball that these top tier players want to be here. They want to be playing for Dan Marley and they want the notoriety that this NCAA program is bringing to the Valley. Talk about top tier programs. How about Illinois and a grad transfer and Michael Finke. You it. just saw the big man out there today. He's got his little brother Tim, also a four-star recruit from uh, the high schools in Illinois. What are you seeing from the Finkies? Yeah, you know, I, I love when you start talking about the backcourt and those guys running around causing havoc and distributing the ball to the bigs, but that's really where it starts. It starts with that big interior presence. Can you defend your glass? Can you attack inside on the offensive end? Um, and I think Finke's got a big body. He can do that. I mean, I looked at him. He's got a full-on beard. I'm thinking this guy's a rugged, you know, a dude out there on the court, and that's what Marley likes. He likes those guys that bring their hard hat and their lunch pail uh, to work with them every day. How about this uh, schedule and the time that we have left? It might be the toughest non-conference schedule. Of course, it, it all starts October 30th here at home. We hope to see you here at GCU Arena. They travel to the Wooden Classic at Fullerton against Seton Hall. They got Boise State coming into town. They also have Nevada downtown in the Colangelo Classic. Your thoughts on the schedule? Yeah, a lot more road stuff in there too. True. Opening at South Dakota State, that's a tournament team with an NBA prospect. They go to Texas at one point, Northern mm -hmm. Iowa, all tough teams and neutral games that Seton Hall, if they win, they could play Utah. Uh, they'll be ready for conference play, no doubt, after playing that kind of schedule. Yeah, yeah. they don't shy from the competition. I'm waiting for our road schedule so we can go out there and cover those games because yeah, this we're is still exciting that, uh, and interesting. Hawaii trip. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you mentioned the schedule. Bahamas. Why are we there? Right. Right? <laughs> it's going to be fantastic. Again, it's going to be excitement. I know we're all pumped up for it to start October 30th. Thanks so much for coming in. Thanks, Barry. All right, Paul Coral, Kate Longworth, Scott Williams, I'm Barry Vitell. Stay with us. More of the Dan Marley Show continues after this time out on Fox Sports Arizona. Dan in here. Where is Dan Marley? <laughs> That's kind of like his cue, like, all right, after this is done, we're, we're going out there. So Midnight Madness is like the unofficial kickoff to the men's and women's basketball season. Traditionally, it's been first day they're technically allowed to practice together, and it's kind of turned into quite a production nowadays. Batman-themed one, we started planning it about two or three months before we did last year's pirate-themed one. So. They kind of overlap now. I just need two of you to follow Bane until he leaves the floor. No spotlights on the forklift. As far as how many people are involved in the show, uh, we have men's basketball, women's basketball, Havocs, Spirit Programs, Cheer Dance Band, Mascot Thunder, Hap Hopper and his crew with the video and ribbon board, Ian Shell and his crew with audio and lighting and all that. And there's a, there's a few hundred people all involved with the show itself as a live performance, as a live production. It's a lot of fun, they get to camp out for it. They get to experience the community of Camp Elliott. You know, a lot of the Havocs leaders have met a lot of their best friends through Camp Elliott. As far as whose mind is it on year round, it's on my mind year round, obviously, but there's a lot of people that 
helped make this possible. So I'm very thankful for every group that's involved with it. Yeah, I'd be setting perimeters like right before we open doors. So when students are coming in, uh, you guys will be on the floor. This year, rehearsals went extremely smooth, which was comforting, but also a little bit nerve wracking. So you don't really expect it to go that smoothly. So once we got to the show, everything I felt went perfect. I would say the only part that I was really nervous about was when Dan and Nicole were supposed to come out, I couldn't see them in the tunnel. I couldn't see if they were ready yet. So I almost jumped over the table to cut, try to get a better view if I could see in the tunnel, but thankfully somebody got on radio and said, hey, he's there, he's there, go ahead and send him. So even though it's nerve wracking and scary for that whole year trying to put it together, it really pushes me to be more creative and to uh, really try to do something unique for the students, which is a lot of fun. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Well, as we wrap things up, let's talk about the schedule. It all gets started October 30th here at GC Arena. Hope to see you out here as this place goes crazy with this student body and the Havocs. Let's talk about the non-conference schedule to begin though. We've got trips to Texas. We've got Boise State coming in. You're gonna be traveling downtown to the Talking Stick Arena. Yeah. You're going to Fullerton. It'll be, uh, this will be our hardest non-conference schedule we've had here in the six years. Uh, as you said, we're at Texas. Uh, we're uh, playing Nevada at Talking Sticks. They'll be in the top five, maybe six in the nation. As far as, uh, you know, team, they, have, they got a tremendous team coming back from what they did last year. Uh, we're playing a Seton Hall in the Wooden Classic. Uh, Boise State, as you said, we're going to San Diego. We're at Northern Iowa. Uh, so we got a really, a really hard schedule. Uh, South Dakota State is our first game, and uh, right now they're, uh, they have a 20-game winning streak, which is the highest in the nation, so that's a really hard place to play. They have a, a All-American, Mike Dom, who plays a lot like Ollie, he's going to be a senior, so that's going to be a huge test for us right at the beginning. So uh, by no means it's going to be an easy non-conference. We're going to have to really play well. It'll be uh, definitely a, a tall task as you go into conference play at around January 3rd to take on Utah Valley. What do you see from this conference? It gets better every year. You know, when we started this six years ago, I think our conference was rated 30th in the RPI, and last year was either 14th or 15th. So uh, the players have gotten better, the coaching staffs have gotten better, um, and our league is really propelled. So it's going to be a tough, tough year. It always is in the WAC. Uh, the first two games, I think, are Utah Valley and Seattle at home. Unfortunately, it'll be when the students are on break, mm -hmm. and those two teams will be the two of the tougher teams in the conference. So it's going to be a, a challenging year. But I, I haven't, I haven't felt this good going into a season uh, in the six years as I do this year with the guys that I have here and how hard they work. Awesome. Well, good yeah. luck, coach. Thank you. All right, for Dan Marley, I'm Barry Beachell. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Dan Marley Show.